Namo Buddhaya, this is Abhinav Gulecha and I welcome you in this channel. Uh, now, today what I am doing is that I am starting a series of videos uh, on Dhammapada. Dhammapada is a Buddhist scripture uh, which is in the verse form. There are like f small small verses in which Buddha has given teaching and there are in total some 423 verses. Now, one are the discourses. Like if you see, I have made videos on the discourses. Right? Discourses are basically a bit long and you know they require some study so I have tried to make them simple so I am covering like one discourse in one video so I am explaining through that. Now I am starting, now this is a series that I am starting on Dhammapad. Dhammapad is very easy, uh, even lay person uh, like every one of us they can understand it and uh, it's very easy for them to understand. So what I will be doing is that every uh, 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 every video I will be talking, I will be taking up like 20, 20 verses, right? So we can have like a series of 20 videos where I will cover all of the Dhammapada and uh, it has deep spiritual knowledge, how we should live our life, how we should attain our ultimate goal of liberation, right? So Buddha has made it very, very easy for everyone, right? So this is the book that I am referring. Uh, this is the book, uh, this is a translation of Dhammapada by Iknath Iswaran. So basically they, in this, this is a very beautiful book. I highly suggest if you are serious about reading Dhammapada uh, and understanding, buy this book. Uh, if you are in, uh, if you are from India, then there is a specific Indian edition uh, that is available. That is a much cheaper in price as compared to the uh, normal edition. So it is available on Amazon, Flipkart, and you know online it is available. So you can check out this Dhammapada by Eknath Iswaran. I will also give the link to the Amazon India uh, the webs the link of that uh, product in the description so you can check that right so uh, this is uh, Dhammapad uh, we are starting the uh, verses 1 to 19 I will be covering verse 1 to so how this book is arranged just, just let me tell you yeah, this is book by introduced by Eknath Iswaran so first if you see there is a you no know, a big commentary like around around 100 pages by uh, introduction by Eknath Iswaran Eknath Iswaran is a renowned uh, spiritual um, leader and uh, uh, the, he has uh, translated lot of other books like Bhagavad Gita, Upanishads and all. So uh, the introduction of 100 pages is, is precious and maybe I will cover that also, my, my learnings from that particular introduction in some other video. Uh, now in this video I will be starting from verse 1. Uh, now how it is arranged is that uh, it is arranged theme wise. So uh, First, there is an introduction of 100 pages by Eknath Iswaran. Then there are chapter introductions by Stephen Rupenthal, right? Uh, like two, three page chapter introduction. So it's organized as chapters, right? So the chapter one that we are discussing, one and two are the twin verses and vigilance, that chapter. Uh, so there is a small introduction, but I will straight away jump to the uh, uh, verses so that we can, uh, you can also read at your end the verses. I will just read the verses and share some of my reflections, right? So, let us start, right? Uh, the verse 1 is that our life is shaped by our mind. We become what we think. Suffering follows an evil thought as the wheels of a cart follow the oxen that draw it, right? So, it says life is shaped, our life is shaped by our mind. What we think, this is how important our thinking is, right? So, how we think, our mind is shaped. Suffering follows in. So, if we think evil, suffering will follow automatically, right? The, the no thought. This it's like an automatic rule that suffering will follow us, as if the wheels of the cart follow the oxen that draw it. So, important thing what Buddha is saying here is that we need to think the right thoughts, right? Do not think evil thoughts because it will cause us suffering. Buddha's entire teaching is elimination of suffering, getting free from suffering. But for doing that. We need to pay attention to our thoughts, mindfulness of thoughts. Verse number two says, uh, "Our life is shaped." So, how how it is in, in the organized is first it is a negative thing that is said, and second is a positive thing thing that is said, right? So, the second verse is, "Our life is shaped by our mind. We become what we think. Joy follows a pure thought like a shadow that never leaves." How beautiful! That means if we think joyful, if we think a kind thought. A positive thought then joy will follow right it's like a shadow that never leaves so if we are like if we are in control of our mind right 
uh, if we are practice a bit mindfulness of our feelings of our emotions of our thoughts then let us be mindful of what thoughts we are entertaining in our mind we cannot control the first thought that is arisen because it it basically uh, comes out of the latent uh, the seeds in our unconscious we cannot control that but we can control what energy we give to the thought that arises and move it to a positive direction like in noble eightfold path uh, buddha says various steps on how to convert a wrong thought into a positive thought like buddha says that either replace it with a positive thought or dis distract yourself right or last option is to suppress it so there are various ways we need to change our thinking pattern verse 3 says words was in verse 3 buddha says he was angry with me he attacked me he defeated me he robbed me those who dwell on such thoughts will never be free of hatred verse 4 says he was angry with me he attacked me he defeated me he robbed me those who do not dwell on such thoughts will surely become free of hatred verse number 5 says for hatred can never put an end to hatred love alone can this is an unalterable law how deep is it right so verse 3 4 5 talk about talk about our thoughts about other people that he did this to me he we, we spend our lot of time in complaining right about what the wrong that has happened to us this hatred that we entertain this hatred will not free us what will free us is love right how deep but it's not easy to practice right we uh, it's it, it we need so what the thing is that we need to go against our natural thinking patterns right the natural way our minds are constructed and we have unconsciously programmed and trained them is to think in a certain way negative way right uh, think about self pity hatred and all these things anger and all so we now have to pull ourselves from that tide of you know going down right going downstream we have to pull up ourselves from it and then think positive replace those th those thoughts with love for that person right replace those thoughts with love fill your mind fill our mind with love right because in verse 5 buddha says for hatred can never put an end to hatred love alone can this is an unalterable law right so it's like what mahatma gandhi said that an eye for an eye will make the whole world blind right so if we entertain so if someone practices violence that is his karma that is at his level what he is thinking and doing but we are at a higher consciousness level so we have to practice what is right for us not to stoop down below our level and uh, stoop down uh, stoop our level below and come to his level no we don't have to do that we have to practice love in our mind so deal with him with whichever way you know in the worldly way we have to deal with him right but in our mind we should not harbor those thoughts of hatred they will only bind us they will only restrict our our spiritual progress restrict us to achieving our goal right then verse 6 people forget that their lives will end soon for those who remember quarrels come to an end this is what again i will it's like this one of the buddha's five remembrances that one day my life will end i will die so whatever my greed about passions and everything will come to an end uh, it's like said that when person dies people don't say his name people will not say my name abhinav people will say take this body put him put this body there take this body put this there right so my name will get replaced by this body right this is how things are but we evade this we do not think about our death right uh, that's why in in buddhism in buddha teachings uh, mindfulness of body is one of the uh, four foundations of mindfulness right uh, then they practice something like as in symmetry meditation where they, they they put you know person sees how body is decomposes and dies so all our attachments get dissolved when we see that we our life is going to end we are going to die one day right so we need to remember death and all these petty quarrels when we know that we are going to die and we we will die these petty quarrels that we entertain that we keep entangled that we keep ourselves entangled in they come to an end right verse number 7 as a strong wind blows down a weak tree 
Mara, the tempter, oh, overwhelms weak people who, eating too much and working too little, are caught in the frantic pursuit of pleasure. As the strongest wing cannot shake a mountain, Mara cannot shake those who are self-disciplined and full of faith. This is how important, right? That that important thing is that there is this concept of Mara. Mara is the personification of all the evil, bad qualities, right? So Mara can Mara keeps on tempting people, right? Uh, 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 tempting people who are and those those people given who who are not very strong. So it's like it said that you know if we don't have a a, a deep practice, right? Then when the flood comes, uh, you know, flood of anger, flood of hatred, it comes. We will be swept, right? The Mara will be able to sweep us, right? But as the strongest wind cannot shake a mountain, so he is compared. First, he, the weak person, Buddha says, is like a weak tree. That weak tree is swept when the flood comes, wind blows down. But the strong person is like a mountain. Mara cannot shake those who are self-disciplined and full of faith. So we have to, from that weak tree, we have to become a mountain, as strong as a mountain through our practice. Through the path, the noble eightfold path that Buddha has given us, right? Okay. Now, uh, nine ten is on the uh, 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 monk, monkhood, the uh, people who wear robes. So it is like uh, verse number nine says, "Those who put on the saf saffron robe without purifying the mind, who lack truthfulness and self-control, are not fit to wear the saffron robe." Verse number ten. But those who have purified their minds, who are endowed with truth and self-control. Are truly fit to wear the saffron robe. So Buddha here says it's not about wearing the saffron robe that qualifies you as a as a person who is purified. It's basically your purification is important. The more important thing is that you should be purified. It's not the external appearance, right? So if a person, even if he is not, he is not, he's purified, but he's not wearing a saffron robe, he is actually a equivalent to a monk only. So what? See, I have al always because I have I have seen my past lives being trained as a monk, and I have a lot of inclination towards uh, Buddhist teachings in this lifetime. Also, though I am a from a different religion, what I uh, what I have realized is that you know some sometimes there is always this inclination in me to just you know leave everything and become a monk, right? And and I I have been fascinated by you know by the people who wear this uh, maroon brown robes. Right and and uh, monks and you know when I once I visited Dhamshala in my uh, honeymoon I actually met uh, some, some monks I even exchanged numbers and my wife got um, uh, a bit tense that you know whether I I am going to you know go into monkhood and all these things so what understanding that I get is that even if I am not a monk in this lifetime but we can all work at purifying ourselves it doesn't matter if I am not wearing a robe. But if I am, I am, I am purifying myself. If I have purified myself, then I can be living in a lay life and still be like a monk, right? I can be like a monk in a in a monk in a suit, right? A monk in a T-shirt, right? So, so that is how we can think of it. It's not about the wearing the robe. It's all about the purification of the mind, right? Okay. Verse number eleven and twelve are on people who imagine trivial things. Fancy things, right? On the spiritual path, you find a lot of people who imagine all the wrong things, and they get stuck in them, and they have this vision of gods, and you know they get stuck. There are a lot of things that make stuck a person in the spiritual journey. So on this, the Buddha says, eleven and twelve, the deluded, imagining trivial things to be vital to life, follow their vain fancies and never attain the highest knowledge. Verse number twelve. But the wise, knowing what is trivial and what is vital, set their thoughts on the supreme goal, and attain the highest knowledge. So, what is very important is that we need to uh, decide. We need to exercise our vivek, which is called wisdom in English, on what is trivial for my practice. What is what is trivial and what is vital for my practice, right? And concentrate on that. For example. In Buddha's path, also there are many paths, but Buddha's core, uh, the goal of our practice is to achieve liberation. So we should not get stuck in different different things like you know, uh, uh, 
getting born in a particular particular place or become a, a certain god no one from this point to that point that is our path and in during that lot of things can happen we may born in we may get born in more conducive conditions for furthering our spiritual progress all that will happen but our goal has to be clear and we should not st get stuck in any some people what they also do is that they get they make buddhism they make buddhism their identity buddha did not create any religion buddha gave the teachings now there are many people who create religion and they 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 hold that as make it as their ego and they get stuck and then they fight with people with other religions saying that my path is good your path is bad no we don't have to get stuck in these things let those people who get stuck in those things let them do that but we have to only follow what buddha our teacher we have to take buddha as our teacher and do what buddha has told us to do and just follow with one pointedness what buddha has asked us to do which is the four noble truths and the noble eightfold path right just keep committed to our, that path because there are a lot of trivial things that will come that will kind of you know uh, want that will stray us from our path derail us but we don't have to be derailed then very very good uh, verse number 13 all verses are very good but uh, it's so beautiful as the rain seeps through an ill thatched hut passion will seep through an untrained mind as rain cannot seep through a well thatched hut a passion cannot seep through a well trained mind so it's basically uh, buddha compares the mind to a mind to a hut uh, how a hut is created so if a weak mind is like a ill thatched hut so as the rain water seeps through passions will seep through right so we need to and 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 as the you know uh, if the hut is constructed well then water will not be able to seep through when rain comes so we need to reflect see all of us you me everyone we have our bright side and we have our dark side those dark side are the rain water right the, because our mind is not fully trained sometimes have you ex experienced that no matter if there is like a hatred or a sexual desire those things even how deep we go in our practice these things don't go why because they they are so deeply ingrained in our consciousness we carry these seeds not only from ourselves but also from our ancestors so that much more effort is required that much more effort is required to go deep into our practice and try to make our mind so well trained buddha's knowledge is all about mind training making our mind so well trained so that rain water cannot seep through and we can sleep peacefully in the night right otherwise the rain water will seep through we will not be able to sleep peacefully right we will not be able to get liberated right okay so be mindful of what are those particular things that can seep through right and making our mind strong in that direction right okay uh, verse number 15 those who are selfish suffer here and hereafter they suffer in both worlds from the results of their own actions but those who are selfless rejoice here and rejoice hereafter they rejoice in both worlds from the results of their own actions so here buddha makes it very clear that all the suffering that we create are from our own actions right and why due to our own selfishness go back to the noble truth number 2 cause of suffering which is our own selfish desire cravings and even the underlying root of that is ignorance or ignorance of not understanding that everything is impermanent right so our selfish our being selfish creates our suffering right so it's like if this then that and if we are selfless if we are generous right then we create those kind of results so choice is upon us right buddha leaves the buddha always says i can only show you the way you have to uh, do the work right i i will not do the work for you you have to do the work right i can only show you the right way okay then uh, 17 is also linked with 15 with so 15 16 was together right 15 now 17 is also linked 17 is also on selfishness those who are selfish suffer in this life and in the next they suffer seeing the results of the evil they have done and more suffering awaits them in the next lifetime so those who are selfish that means if we are, we are selfish if we are stuck in cravings and desires we will suffer in this life also and we will suffer in the coming lives also this person starts seeing the results of their actions in this life and in the coming life so 
better desist from all cravings and all the aversions right uh, be mindful of them because they will create suffering not only in this life but in coming lives 17 18 is linked 18 is but those who are selfless rejoice in this life and in the next they rejoice seeing the good that they have done and more joy awaits them in the next life so a lot of times we see people who are very well off and everything and you know they have very comfortable jobs lot of money and everything very good families and all see that is all the merit that is accruing now to them of the actions that they have done they or their ancestors have done in in the past lives right so we should never become jealous of them they are on their path they are reaping the benefits if we are seeing sorrow in our life this is like the karma that is that is now fructifying of the past deeds that we have done so we have to take it in a, so there is a um, uh, venerable monk who said if you have uh, created if you have uh, if you have made a shit sandwich might as well you need to eat it right so to so deal it with acceptance but do start doing the right actions the start following the dharma that buddha has suggested just take that step on that dharma and just on the, in this life we need to correct we need to rectify okay verse number 19 this is the last verse for this yeah last verse for this particular uh, 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 video those who recite many scriptures but fail to practice their teachings pra practice their teachings are like a cow herd counting another's cows they do not share, share in the joys of the spiritual life but those who know few scriptures yet practice their teachings overcoming all lust hatred and delusion live with a pure mind and the highest wisdom they stand without external supports and share in the joys of the spiritual life so here buddha talks about buddha is giving the analogy of a cow herd counting another another cows what's the use of counting another another cows right that is how people do they read all the scriptures they do all the theoretical too much of analysis but they do not implement it in their life they will not reap the benefits but buddha says those who no see friends even if this dhammapad this one book 423 verses not even the 423 verses but this essence of this book is enough all the teachings is there in this book right so just take the teachings take the few teachings and implement it in in a better way rather than spreading yourself too thin and uh, and reading so many scriptures see what i make the videos on the discourses is because there are you know buddha explains the same thing so why buddha is then so then the point is by buddha is there are 84000 plus discourses of the buddha is because wherever buddha went wherever for that particular person or that particular community or the audience he adjusts his teachings according to that so there is always the, you know when we go back and check different different scriptures or discourses we get the same thing in a different way so it solidifies solidifies in our mind so that's why i am making these videos right and it is a part of my own spiritual practice this this these videos help me also to go deeper but the important thing we have to understand and remember is not to get stuck in theory a lot of people get stuck in theory they just at surface level they get stuck and they do not practice so we need to focus on practicing where is my practice going am i practicing the teachings or i am just learning them right so so this is verse number 19 so we will close it here i hope uh, this uh, video was useful we will pick up from verse number so this was 19 and 20 actually so this was verse 19 and 20 so this is verse 1 to 20 from 21 onwards uh, the theme will be vigilance then we will pick it um, up in the next um, video do please support my work in any way possible so that i can continue making these videos if you find it interesting if you find it helps in your spiritual path do please support in any way the links are there in the description the link of this book also is there in the description uh, i'll see you in the in the next video on dhammapad and uh, thank you so much for watching do share your thoughts comments we are a spiritual community so let's just please uh, it will be really good to you know uh, hear your thoughts views and uh, feedback any feedback that you have for me my videos thank you so much नमो बुद्धाय नमो बुद्धाय